Hello, everyone. My name is Paris. I'm a product manager at Android Studio working on design tools. And I'm Jerome. I'm a software engineer uh, on Android Studio working on design tools. As you know, Android apps are now used on more and more devices, from phones to tablets, wearables, and even desktop through Chrome OS. And so it's more important than ever for app developers like you to make sure that your app looks good and have provide the user a great experience across all those devices. And today, we are going to talk to you about some of the tools that we built in Android Studio to help you achieve that. The first thing I want to talk to you about is window size classes. We know there's a wide variety of devices out there, various sizes, and so to help you deal with that diversity, we've created window size classes. Basically, it's three buckets of sizes that help you figure out how to think of your app across different device sizes. So as a first step to thinking of building your app for all devices, you should think of how should my app look like on compact devices, medium devices, and expanded devices. Window size classes exist both for width and height, though really the width component is the most important to think of. So how would you handle this if you're working with a view-based layout system? First of all, if you're working with a layout, you probably want to preview it across different devices to see how does it look like on a phone, maybe a larger screen, to help you with that, in the layout editor, in the device picker, we've added what we call reference devices. Those devices are what we think are good representative of the variety of devices out there and are a good first step to uh, look at your layout and see if they look good already on those four devices. We have a phone an unfolded foldable, a tablet, and a desktop. For example, if I select the tablet layout, you can now see that my uh, layout is uh, displayed on a tablet screen. Here I use a two-column layout, which is a pretty good choice for a larger screen compared to the uh, one-column uh, list layout that we used for the phone. But you might be wondering, is there anything I can do better on this layout to make sure that it looks good and is as user-friendly as possible on all devices. To help you with that, we've added a new type of lint checks that we call visual linting. Where can you see that? Well, where you would normally look for lint checks, here you see that I have a warning. If I click on it, it will open the error panel and show a new type of warning category that we call layout validation. What are those warnings? What happens is in the background, we render the layout you're currently looking at on the four reference devices, the phone, the foldable, the tablet, and the desktop. And once we have those renderings, we analyze them to try and detect possible errors and design issues that we could warn you about, and this is one of those. This one says, oh, you shouldn't use bottom navigation bar on larger screen. If I click on the error, I get some extra information. I can even have access to uh, links to uh, the material design guidelines, for example. And in addition, if I double click on the issue, I can see the layout validation. The new panel that opens displays my layout across four different reference devices and highlights the one that have the issue. So here it's the foldable, the tablet, and the desktop. Why? Because those three uh, screens have, are either in the medium or expanded window size class and really, they shouldn't be using a bottom navigation bar. How should we fix that? 
Well, one possibility would be to uh, create new layouts using the uh, width uh, layout qualifier for medium and expanded screens and replace the bottom navigation bar with, for example, a navigation rail. Once I do that, I can see that I now don't have any errors anymore. And in addition, if I were to open the layout validation panel, then you would see all my uh, layouts displayed with the phone still using the bottom navigation bar, but for example, the foldable now correctly has the navigation rail. And you notice that it's not highlighted anymore because we fixed the error. So the layout validation allows you to quickly see your layout on all the four devices and see as a first check if it looks as you would expect. So for view-based layout, we've added those new visual linting lint checks that are basically helping you with identifying potential issues with your layout across form factors and also help you keep up with the current best practices. And thanks to the layout validation, you can easily display your layout to check that they behave as you intend. Now, if you work with Compose, dealing with window size classes is even easier. Thanks to the uh, Material 3 window size class library, you have access to a window size class object that you can pass to your composable. Inside that object, you can very uh, easily just check what is the window size class, either width or height. And here, for example, I can check, am I in the case where I'm in the compact width category? If yes, use a bottom navigation bar. If not, use a navigation rail. And in my main activity, how do I pass this uh, window size class object to my composable where it's very easy? Again, thanks to the Material 3 library, you can have access to a utility method that helps you compute the uh, window size class from the activity. We know that in view-based layouts, you have the preview. It would be nice if we could also use the Compose preview to check that our layout reacts correctly on window size classes. And indeed, we can do that. First of all, we need to set up the preview annotation, selecting a device. Here, I chose the phone reference device. And then I can simply get the configuration from the uh, local device, get the screen size from the configuration. And then again, thanks to the Material 3 library, I have an easy way to compute the window size class from the device size. I can then simply pass it to my composable that I want to preview. And here is how it works. So here I have the phone preview. But if I replace it with the foldable, then you will see how my screen updates to the foldable. And then I can check how it would look like on a tablet, for example. And here it is. Now, we might also want to have something akin to layout validation in Compose, that is displaying several previews at once and check that, for example, my layout handles correctly different window size classes and see it on the same screen. That's very easy using Compose Multi Preview. You can define new annotations that are basically a list of previews that will be applied to any composable that I annotate. So here I define four preview categories. We have uh, several ways of defining uh, preview categories with devices. Here I show you a few. You can use the recommended devices like phone or foldable. If you have a specific device in mind, we also have uh, a specific way of providing an exact configuration for a device. Or you can, we have predefined configurations as well of already existing device. And to help you with that, Android Studio has auto-completion and error validation to help you uh, define those. If I just list all my previews and then create uh, a new annotation here called reference devices, then I can simply replace in the uh, code my pre previous preview annotation for a single device with reference devices. And now you can see that my preview 
is now several screens together of the same composable. If I just rearrange it so that we see it better, you can now see all the screens that I defined previously. So you can see if your composable does indeed react as you might expect on based on different window size classes, for example, but of course that's not limited to window size classes. You can do many different kinds of configurations uh, that you might want to check for themes, font scaling, anything you might want to check. So to recap, for uh, Compose tools, we have an easy way to deal with window size classes, and that is using the Material 3 window size class library. It provides you with very easy to use APIs so that you don't have to think of like how to deal uh, with that yourself. And then thanks to the Compose Multi Preview, uh, you can easily preview any number of configurations and check that your composable indeed works as intended across multiple devices. In addition, uh, the nice thing about the pre multi-preview annotation is that not only can you use it on one composable, once it's defined, you can use it on several. So you can preview again and again on the same configuration, several different composable. Let me now invite Paris back to the stage to talk about the latest in the emulator. Thank you, Jerome. Awesome. Now that you've learned about Studio tools for building adaptive UIs, let's talk a little bit about deployment tools. Let's say I want to check the layouts that Jerome just built on my running device to see if it actually works across different string sizes. What I have to do is actually launch three different emulators and try to swap between them to see what's going on, which can be a little inconvenient. Thus, we now recommend just one emulator, the resizable emulator, which lets you quickly toggle between the three reference devices, phone, foldable, and tablets to make it easier to both validate your layout and test the behavior at runtime. Let's see, for example, I can quickly toggle to see that my bottom navigation bar on a phone switches to a nav rail when I switch to a foldable. I can interact and test the app a little bit, then switch to a larger tablet and see that the state of the navigation is updated as well as test the different list detail view. In a foldable state, I can even launch two apps at the same time to split screen, so I can see if my apps cor reacts correctly to multitasking experiences. You can see here, as I scroll through the tracker app to look at my to-dos, then go to YouTube to watch Andre Dev Summit online and in person here. Moreover, we've also want your applications to look and work great on desktop, especially Chromebooks. Thus, we've also introduced three new desktop AVDs. You can now deploy your app to small, medium, and large AVDs. One really cool thing I like to do here is actually, if you deploy this tracker app to the desktop application, you can see that I can resize the app and see the transition state. For example, you can see the text is wrapping the way that I would expect. It's updating the navigation uh, as I switch between different screen sizes, and the transition state is what I would like. Now, you may also be wondering, what about Wear OS apps? especially now we have this shiny new Pixel Watch. Actually, building for Wear OS apps have never been easier for, with Android Studio. You can now leverage a lot of what you just learned about adapt, building for adapted apps into building for the wrist. So let's take a look. First of all, starting with what you just learned from Jerome about visual linting, like for large screen, we've actually built in design time lints to help identify common issues when you're building for your Wear OS layouts. As an example here, it's recommended to have a minimum margin uh, for 2.5% for a square watch face and a 5.2% for a round watch face. So if you build a layout that looks something like this, where the text is too close to the edge of the watch face, our tools will warn you. You can see on the right here in the layout validation window, we've flagged uh, warnings on 
layouts that we think that doesn't look correct on the device set sets. In the bottom, the problems panel give you more information about what that error is and how you'll be able to correct it. If you're using Compose, which I hope you are, you might note that back in July, Compose for Wear OS has just launched 1.0. So if you start using Compose to build Wear OS layouts, you can now use Compose Preview, Multi-Preview, just as you would normally. For example, you can create Compose Previews that are different Wear OS devices. You can, in this case, I've created three, uh, large round, small round, and square. And I can put them, uh, just like what uh, Jerome just did, into a Multi-Preview class, in this case called Wear Preview Devices. And if I apply that to any Wear Composables, uh, in this case, I pick a volume screen preview UI, you can see that I can iterate and see my preview side by side as I build my Compose UI. Let's say you've finished building and creating different Wear OS uh, UI, and you're ready to deploy and debug your Wear OS services. You can now leverage something called direct service launch. In the latest version of Ender Studio, we now support deploying tiles and complications directly. Let me walk you through an example about how you can deploy aware tiles. So now for any of your Wear OS services, you will see this run icon in the gutter right next to it. And all you have to do is really one click on that tile, and it will automatically create the correct configuration and run on your watch emulator. So if we see this in action, I have a sample tile services. I click on that run icon. You can see on the top that a configuration is automatically created. And boom, the tile is launched on the watch emulator. You can launch multiple tiles, complications. In this case, I have a couple already. And we believe that this will actually make building tiles and complications much more easier. We have also added four new buttons to the Wear OS emulators toolbar to resample hardware controls and test physical behaviors. So to walk you through, bottom one is for launcher, bottom two is for home, palm is to move the watch to an ambient state, and tilt is to indicate whether or not the user is looking at the watch. This way you can test hardware specific behaviors that are targeted for your app without actually running it on the physical watch and trying to do the tilt motion yourself. Finally, if you don't know already, we launched the Wear OS Pairing Assistant back in Ender Studio Arctic Fox and have done a lot of improvements since then. We now make it easier to manage and connect Wear OS emulators. You can pair multiple Wear OS devices with a single virtual or physical device. Ender Studio also remembers previously paired states so that you can pair again when you launch uh, the emulators and is tightly integrated with the device manager. You can see here, I have a phone and a watch emulator. I can use the device manager dropdown to pair the wearable. That step-by-step -step dialog will show up. You can choose which watch you want to pair. It will actually check requirements that you need. In this case, I don't have the Wear OS app installed on the phone, so let me go ahead and install it on this emulator. Once I do, it's uh, successfully paired. So if I go into the phone and actually open this Wear OS um, app, you can see that everything is set up and the correct Wear OS emulator is connected. The device manager also shows you the statuses of that pair uh, state. All right, we know that was actually a lot of tools that we just run through really quickly. So here's a list of everything we've talked about today. You can visit these two links to check out and learn more resources and information about building for large string and Wear OS. We hope that after this talk, no matter if you're building for views or compose, large or small screen, you can leverage these tools in Ender Studio and start building for multi-device today. Thank you very much. Thank you.